Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's February 27th, 2022. My name is Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the bear podcast for the determinant of life, episode number 637. And it's that time of month, folks. It's time for this. Great D D. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Yay! Two great sessions of D and D. We decided to start recording our. Uh, our sessions so we can privately like re-listen to them slash watch them uh because i'm doing the recording so i'm using i'm just using obs to make a recording and then i privately up to load it to my personal youtube account so nobody can see it besides those people who i link it to so uh and uh being able to re-watch those ah oh, it's so good and i just struck a deal this between the last two sessions. Now I'm waiting for one of my people to come back and back so that they could yell at me. Yay. I just asked for a few things. Wanted something in return. I made an offer. It was accepted. Everything's good now. Hmm. Sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. Anyways. I'm sure you don't want me to rattle off about what, everything that happened. No, 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 you don't need to. I'm just, we're, I'm just, are you, are you? Uh, yeah. So, Damon, how's your month been going? <laughs> um, so, uh, well, we'll start with the good, well, not good, but just the thing. So we'll start with things. Um, so I went to North American Bear Weekend. Um, in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, if you've been a watcher or our listener to the show, uh, we have recorded from there in the past. It's a quite the good um, um, event and weekend. Uh, but this time I actually competed ho, 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 uh, for the North American pet title. Um, I did not win, so I'm just going to kind of throw that out there. But um, I am very proud of what I did. Um had a great time, did a lot, did a lot uh, of work, and um, put a lot into it. And um, if you follow me on Facebook, you know I made a post about a week ago. Um, I'm disappointed, but just more in the outcome than in, I'm not in myself, I'm just more disappointed in the outcome. When you put a lot of effort and work into something and, and you come up, I'm assuming you come up just short of, of, of the title, it can be, it can sting. So, um, but I the contestants, that, sorry, I was just going to say, David, I think you did really well. Um, someone was kind of cluing me in on some things mm -hmm. while you were gone. Uh, <laughs> I got to remotely see your speech and uh, I think you did very good and I was really proud. Um, and then I saw your post afterwards about the money that you raised and, uh, bitch, like you, <laughs> you fundraised like, uh, like a fuck ton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, and, well, well, what? 
Yeah. So for for those that don't know, if you don't know the post or you haven't read the post, um, the oh, let me get the official number. Well, I don't know if I have the official number. Um, and go to my go to where are you at? There you are. Okay. So the total amount raised by the contestants, and though this is just the contestants only, um, um, during our cash raffle, um, uh, was about four forty two hundred dollars. I on my own raised one thousand two hundred eighty one dollars of that. So on my own, which is about a quarter, if not more so. Um so yeah, I am very proud. I I've I gave some really good thanks to um, I, we call them bucket bitches. I don't like the term, but that's what they're called. Um, um, Pup Gus um, Kelly, who's from Iowa, and uh, my friend Rob, aka um, Arcus. Um, they were my bucket pups. That's what I'll call them. There we go. That makes sense. Um, that were there for me, especially um, Gus, because uh, one of the things you could buy. You could spend two hundred and fifty dollars and get a roll of tickets, which is two thousand tickets. However, the caveat of doing that or selling that is you have to split all two thousand of those fucking tickets. Yeah, so um, I got two of those, one on each night, one Thursday night and one Friday night, mm. and. Gus, without, without hesitation, said, I will break these down. You go off and sell. So I did. Yeah, and granted, I, I had to sell by myself. I didn't have someone there to help me, like, tear tickets and all that stuff. But Jesus fucking Christ, to stop, have to stop and do that and either split it at least in half so that the people who bought it can get their side and then taking 2,000 tickets and separating them is not easy. And um, he did it. Um, so thank him so much. Thank you guys so much. I don't know if you'll ever hear this, but um, he was smart and he realized I can do this and you can go off and and continue selling, which is what I did. Um, and like kind of interact with the, you know, with the content, with the, um, audience and and guests there and and have fun so yeah amazing so I'm I'm super happy I'm super proud of that um uh my knees will probably not be thankful like in a month or so because <laughs> I'm still I mean I'm still feeling it um but they're okay they're getting better they're just I just not to, need to do some maybe I need a massage. That's what I need to do. Um, and there was one other thing that happened at North American Bear Weekend mm -hmm. um, that I'm going to get to discuss. Uh, mm -hmm. So <laughs> part of the weekend um, was theme wear, and I decided to do a fun little take on the Godfather. I did the Dogfather. Um, and I brought my partner, Jim, on stage, and he, he uh, he kind of knew it was happening, but, um, I had the, in order for him to make it work, I wanted it to be somewhat of a surprise to as many people as possible, because I didn't want him to necessarily know, but he's also very smart, my partner's very smart, um, so um, I popped the question. So I am now engaged. Finally. <laughs> yes. So um, uh, tell a story and try not to cry. Uh, um, the idea, I, I had the idea back in January when Jim was in the hospital, like, the first or second time. 
And I realized that now is not the, I'm not going to waste any more time because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, and we had a shitty fucking January. Um, so I knew I wanted to do something. And at first I thought of this as an idea and then I nixed it because I was concerned that it might be a little too much. It might be a little embarrassing. Um, and then I had a really nice conversation with a, a good friend of mine um, and said, you know what? He, he, he told me kind of point blank is why would it be embarrassing for you to declare your love for your partner in front of an audience and, and propose to him? What would be embarrassing about that? And you know what? He was right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I rehashed the idea. Um, I got my friends, Robin, um, Ben involved. Um, and um, basically they gave me, like I was dog father, and they gave me these bags of money. And, and both of them were rings. Um, and I worked with Adam, who runs NAB, um, to switch from the song that I had playing in the background for the dog father thing to then switch to uh, Marry Me a Little from um, uh, Company. And I sang a portion of the song to Jim and then got down on a knee and proposed. So, and he said yes. If you see him on Facebook, um, he has a video and I shared it on mine of, you know, like this, I put a ring on it. So, so yeah, uh, I'm on fianced as it were. Uh, we have not, we, it literally happened a week ago. <laughs> so nothing is set in stone. Um, but we are contemplating getting married in June of 2023. Why? Because June 13th, 2023 is our 20th anniversary. Aww. So it kind of makes sense to do it then. I don't know if we will. Um, we won't do it on the 13th because 13th is a Tuesday and um, no. Um, <laughs> that just seems off. That That's fair. But, yeah. Like we'll either do it the weekend before or the weekend after, but we'll probably celebrate it on the 13th as though it actually happened on that day. Um. But yeah, I mean, so, you can do the whole license thing, so it's like technically official. Then all the the ceremony, family stuff at a later time. The, that way, you can make it specifically that. So there's workarounds, but you know, do, yeah, you do yeah, you yeah. boo. I'm not gonna yeah. tell you what to do. So yeah, um, that's 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 it. That Yay. Was, um I mean, just in general, that's. I mean, it's now been. Um, <laughs> we've been dealing with his um, getting his mother's condo clean. I've got like just to my right over here, there are like four shelves um, that we got from her home that will be going into my office once I get the twin bit, my twin bit that has been sitting there for six years out of there. Um, and then put, you know, and it's just so, yeah, so it's a little crazy, it's a little hectic, but in the midst of it all, um, we we are, uh, I, I love unfianced, I don't even know if that's a word, but I think, but yeah, we are unfianced. You're happily engaged. Yes. So yeah. Yay! That's me. Um, <laughs> a certain someone... All they did was send me a photograph. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even send me the photograph. They sent me a photo of the photograph. <laughs> <laughs> because they couldn't technically release mm -hmm. a photo. Mm -hmm. um, and I just get this random message. I don't think much about it. Time, <laughs> like an hour, hour and a half goes by. And then I bother to look at the message. And in all caps, I replied, 
Is this what I think it is? <laughs> and all I got yeah. was a, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was the end of it. Oh, actually, that's not true. And then I called you a cheeky bugger. Uh, yes, you. Man. To this other person, because they, oh, oh, <laughs> because I, my whole point was like I didn't know, I had no knowledge. Obviously, I wasn't part mm -hmm. of the inner circle, which is fine. Um, and I was <laughs> highly uh surprised and pleased and caught off guard. And um, yeah. Um, what's the funny part is there are many people who probably who had assumed that we were already married. I mean, mm. we've been together, you know, eighteen, nineteen years, so it makes sense. Um. Um, we got the <laughs> obligatory, um, you know, the congratulations. I heard that so many times on um, Friday night. Um, it was it was amazing, but it's also like I'm also doing the competition, so it's kind of like thank you and like putting the smile on and not um, not letting it hurt too, like hit too too much because I knew I'm still got keep my my head in the game as it were um but um it was it was a it was a um a bright light a very bright beautiful light um for the whole weekend um i had i jim i talked to jim afterwards and he um he had assumed something was going on um, but he's also a, uh, he's an actor. Um, he, uh, uh, so he was able to kind of play it off or play with the crowd a little bit. And, um, that was very wonderful, um, getting to have him, uh, so, <laughs> so I left the, the music, the, the idea was to have the, um, MCs, which were Paul Lanner and um, oh, his name just left my head. Nope, not no, nope, nope. Anyway, the other guy, I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try to look it up here in a second. But um, uh, the idea was that I would say, because I'm the dog father, mm -hmm. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. Uh -huh. And then have them lead into the the next track, and then I would just start singing because literally the song starts and I have to start singing. Well, technical difficulties. We all know those things happened, and um, the track wouldn't play, <clears throat> and it 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 wasn't going to play, and it wasn't going to play, and I was just like, "Please, dear God, I need this to play." I mean, it's great if it, I mean, if it, if you can't make it work, I will fucking make this work, but, <laughs> um, it would be great if it could work. And what I didn't want to have happen, was I didn't want to start it and then it start. Right. 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 So we're, uh, fortunately, you know, um, again, Jim and I are theater and we're actors and we know how to kind of like smooth and. Uh, what have you. So we kind of played with the audience a little bit while they figured it all out. And they got it to work and I got to sing it and that was all good. I have no idea how it sounds. I'm looking forward to seeing videos. Um, but yeah, there we go. Now, I don't have a ring on yet because um, um, I got the rings from Amazon and I have tried three times to get one that fits, mm. and I can't. Like, it, it hasn't happened yet. I have two more. I know what doesn't fit. Like, it's too tight, and then I know what's too loose. So I'm trying to meet in the middle. So I have <laughs> two more that I could potentially get. And they are the last two sizes. So if they... If neither of them fit, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, You're going to have to wait until actual jewelry stores open up. So you yeah, can get, get, something, actually get something actually like that'll work. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's good. Yay. Gary? 
<laughs> Congratulations, Damon. I'm very happy for you and Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Same here. I will say, when I saw the picture of the picture, <laughs> like my asking the question was sort of rhetorical because it was super obvious what was happening in that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got a little emotional. I was like, like so like spazzed and excited and i was like wow that's a hell of a like thing to to pull off but it also kind of makes sense that jim figured out what was going on so yeah yeah i had to tell him in order to get him on stage i had to say i need you to trust me like i i'm gonna bring you on stage and you just have to keep going with it and he goes okay um because everything else I like we because again he's been he's gonna he was part of my weekend um we did our fantasy scene together um he was part of the entire weekend mm -hmm. so this was the one thing I didn't tell him like what exactly was going on mm -hmm. so he got an he got the inkling like something was up um, right yeah nice <laughs> <laughs> Gary, how are you? Uh, it's been a month. Yeah. Um, I didn't put it in the list, but yeah, so I had uh, technical difficulties this month uh, with my internet. Uh, come to find out uh, to catch up. So first, apologies to our patrons and uh, our regular listening, watching audience. Last week, uh, my internet crapped out on uh, Sunday, the 20th, when Jeff and I went to record. Um, I had been doing speed tests <laughs> Uh, and it got worse and worse and worse and worse over the course of the time I was doing the speed test, which I've never really had happen before. Um, I had issues back in December. They gave me a new uh, modem box. They said, you know, by the time the appointment, the tech got was going to come here. I canceled it the, like the day the night before because the service was back to what it should be. This was different. It was it was degradating. Uh, so. I worked, tried to work Tuesday evening, the part-time job, and people couldn't hear me. It was just bad. And I was like, okay, this is not working. Mm. So I got super bent out of shape. Um, and so I contacted Spectrum Customer Service and was like, we got problems. And so the gentleman uh, who I was talking to was like, oh, yeah, there's definitely some connection type service issues. He's like, I'm not quite sure what it is, but we'll schedule to have a tech out. I can have them there tomorrow morning, which was a shock. Uh so quickly, uh, he said, and I'm going to give you a credit, which was like worth a fourth of my bill. And I said, thank nice. you very much. Right. Because like technically I hadn't had that many uh, like bad experiences or whatever, but I was like, all right, all right. And it was funny because he said he asked if that was OK. And a part of me, the stingy part of me was like, fuck, no, it's not OK. Like, I want more. Um but then the other part of me was like, don't be <laughs> like that. You know, like they're they're they they preemptively offered it. I've accepted it. It's already been applied to my bills. I'm happy about it. Um, so yeah, anyway, so that's what happened, and then things are back on track, and for the most part, everything seems to be swimmingly good. Uh come to find out, um, they needed to replace some of the components in the outside box that goes to my unit. Um, they replaced internal uh, parts of the connector in the wall and they also replaced a um, end to end coupler uh, and he said yeah this was all out of spec oh He's wow like, it's, it's no wonder that you were having problems I was like oh okay so there was hmm. there was there was some legitimacy like I'm not I'm not crazy uh, about what was the experience so and then someone else pointed out to me when I described it later in the week they were like so did they bother to fix it for the rest of your neighbors and I was like mm, probably not <laughs> so but again i don't know if anybody else is having problems hard to say yeah so there was that uh also had vehicle stuff this month um had an evening where i went to do laundry um because i don't have uh units in my uh, facility where i live in my residence so i go to a laundromat um and i noticed on my way returning from the laundromat um, because it's not far from here so i usually go drop off start and then come home for get some things done and then go back uh, swap out for the dryer, but I noticed that my temperature gauge on my dashboard went all the way to H. And I don't mean like up to H, I meant like all the way. Like, like it was kind of off the 
the thing. And I was like, oh, girl, not, ooh, that's that's bad. Very bad. Very bad. Very bad. Yeah. Um, but, but there was nothing, you know, no uh, steam or anything or whatever coming out from underneath the engine that I was aware of. Couldn't necessarily hear anything that was wrong. So I had pulled off into a parking lot, um, turned the car off to let it cool. It's like 13 degrees out with a wind chill of like, you know, four or oh, something. Gosh. Like so I'm like, this is bad. Cause it's cold mm-hmm. AF out and my engine's overheating. So I called an acquaintance who is a mechanic and was like, actually I texted them first and I was like, Hey, I have a big ask of you. And I realized this is out of the blue. And they got back to me about five minutes. They were like, what's up? And I was like, all right, here's what I'm experiencing. This is what's going on. And they said, sounds like you're overheating. Like your uh, could be your coolant system, you know, yada, yada. So we had a conversation about that. Long story short, I ended up walking to a convenience store, got some antifreeze, put it in because they were like, how much is in your reservoir? I was, I was like, I don't know. I don't know where the reservoir is. Like I'm not mechanically inclined. Like, <laughs> I am. No. So they, they walked me through that and I ended up using at least a half bottle to fill the reservoir. So that what the estimation was that there was probably a slow leak and hence like it, I just happened to luckily catch it when I did. So mm. anyways, I ended up having it towed to the dealership. They took a look. They found that there was a loose hose and a clamp that caused the issue. So they fixed it, put everything back together, ran diagnostics. Nothing else came up. So that was fun. That was, uh, what, Valentine's night? Yeah, something like that. Um, so then I did ride share for like a day. Mm-hmm. Um and then all my coworkers and my boss and everybody was like, well, we can give you a ride. And I was like, yeah, but this happened last night. Like, I'm not, and I'm not phone tree trying to call everybody and be like, can you give me a ride to work? Um, <laughs> so that happened. And then just this week, uh, this past week, <laughs> we're barely a week later, a week and a half. Um, I was hearing this noise when I was out um, doing surveillance uh, for my job out in the county. And I kept hearing this tss, 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 from the rear uh, wheel well, so I'm thinking I'm getting a flat tire or something, but there doesn't seem to be anything wrong when I pull off. Um, can't find anything, so I had the car taken in Saturday morning where I, at the place nearby that I bought the tires, they ran a check. They were like, there's nothing there. They said, however, um, they said it could be your fuel pump or fuel injector. They said, uh, but that is on, is on the other side of your tank, and we can't get to it unless we take your tank out. Um, so we can't really check that. Uh, and that's about $700. And I was like, okay. And they Mm. said, otherwise the vehicle seems fine. They were like, we drive it. We just keep an eye on it. And I was like, well, what if it is that? And they're like, well, you'll probably see that your gas, um, fuel consumption will go up and your like MPG, like your miles per gallon will probably tank, you know, and stuff. They're like, but they're like, otherwise, you know, and so I was like, oh, okay. And then I went out of town because my best friend for work, they had a semi-formal uh, dinner affair, um, mm-hmm. which was nice. Uh, I'm not going to say too much other than I felt like I went to an adult prom um, <laughs> with lots of people who probably should have been and or were in their frats and sororities back when they were in uh, university simply because, mm. girl, Damon, honey, I wish you had been there. There was so much sequin, uh, <laughs> sequins, sequins, sequins. Um, and I was like, and it was really funny because even my best friend was like, so you see how it's like hugging, like it's not, it's too tight. It's not the right size. I'm laughing. Cause I was <laughs> like, we're talking about the other people that were there. I was like, oh, and then you talk about AV issues. I ended up texting AJ because of his background for his career. Mm-hmm. This nightmare of an audio video like thing happens. So it's an honors program where they give all these w- recognition awards and there are videos and the first video is playing, but you can't hear it. Oh, so they try for 15 minutes to resolve. Oh, this. And what was making my ass crack up, I was sending all these messages. AJ, I was like, honey, if you were here, you would be losing your living mind watching this three ring circus. Um, and so the person who's in charge of AV at the, at this park, uh, that we're at, at this event, um, it keeps going over to the DJ and talking and the DJ keeps shaking their head. No. And it's making me laugh because I'm like, bitch, do you people not understand how this works? 
the DJ has his own sound system that is not patched in to the AV system of the facility that we are in. That is where the problem lies. And you can't have the DJ play the sound because he's not playing the video. Like, <laughs> and then you are going to love this, David. They kept not realizing that all the mics are hot. So all these handhelds are like being held in their hands or whatever. And we can hear the conversation. Oh, well, Lord. Tried this? Yes, I tried that. No, I tried that. It's an HDMI. If I unplug it, then nothing works. Like I'm sitting at the table <laughs> and my friend is looking at me and I am just like, oh, my God. And then I told her, I said, on the ride home, I was like, not my circus, not my monkey. Mm -hmm. They eventually got it mostly fixed, but not quite. It was it was a bit quiet to be able mm. to hear the audio, but you could at least, and there was like three videos uh, that they had to play. So yeah, I was amused to no end last night um, at that. So I went out of town, hence I want to make sure the car was working and then drive mm. back. So the car seems to be okay. I'm like, but the whole thing is I'm like, baby, I need you to last me like another year. Because <laughs> <So I, laughs> I'm trying to pay off stuff, you know, and then have some savings to put towards a new vehicle. So yeah. Um, so there's the vehicle stuff. Uh, baking lesson. This one's really short and quick. Hey, kids, if you're going to put um, uh, instant coffee in something that you're baking, uh, don't do what Gary did and put it in with the dry ingredients. Take uh -oh. the instant coffee and add it to the wet ingredients so that it will incorporate and, you know, it'll it'll just work better because when you make um, gingerbread cookies and you put the instant coffee mix in the dry instead of in the wet and then you bake it, you will find that you keep having this strange like strong coffee taste every now and then. And that's because <laughs> the instant coffee didn't exactly incorporate Resolve. right into the batter. So, oh dear. Yeah. You consider not... it kind of like sugar. Right. I'm, I'm, sugar I'm, is know. a wedding. But it's too late because they're already baked, you know? Can't, mm -hmm. can't, can't reverse time to fix that. Can't so reverse that. it. Can't, can't unfix it. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, just lastly, uh, Miss Corona ain't gone. Um, just as a reminder to folks, and Damon, you're quite well aware of that because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. only one person out of everybody currently that I'm aware of that was an attendee at NAB uh, that had not already had COVID got COVID. Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, dang. Yeah. So um yeah, it's been it was rather interesting um uh as someone who hasn't gotten covid um after NAB. Um but I also had covid in January. So right, my right. assumption is that that's why. Um it's been rather interesting. Um the good thing is people are being pretty civil about it to my knowledge um if they are in, if they are they're like people are posting pictures of their negative or positive test or advising that they were positive um but no one is like pointing fingers or placing blame um et cetera et cetera because reality was um everyone there was technically vaccinated or had a negative test within you know so many hours of, of going to the event um most people were vaccinated and are boosted i'm hoping boosted as well but um so it's not really anything that the event could have done but it did not have an event but mm -hmm. um Again, people are being mostly, I mean, to my knowledge, what I've seen on the Yap app and the, you know, Telegram chat and the page in and of itself, most people are being pretty civil and respectful and just kind of indicating, yes, I was positive and or no, I've, I've been negative and I've taken three, you know, rapid tests or whatever. And I'm kind of like, cool, I'm glad that's a thing. Um, because people could have gotten, you know, salty, 
could have potentially could have tried to find out who was the maybe the patient zero or whatever, figure something along those lines. But um, the it was over eight hundred attendees. Mm-hmm. Um, so to kind of put it in comparison, I actually posted this on the Facebook page. These same protocols were put in place for World Bear in August of 2021. Mm-hmm. But it was a f- maybe a fourth of that size, right? A little more than a fourth, but you know, 200 or so people. And there wasn't a variant that was resistant to the um, vaccines. So, you know, you have all of that stuff going on, and that's going to be what happens. Um, yeah. Um, the so. The immediate group of, you know, all of my friends, um, one of them did catch it, um, but they were also the only one that hadn't already had it. Hmm. So there you go. Yeah. So um, to uh, tonight, tonight. <laughs> um, so probably in the morning i'm going to do a rapid uh, Mm -hmm. because this event that we went to there was well over 200 people Mm -hmm. um and uh i was told that you just needed to show your vaccination status Mm -hmm. um of which i didn't bring my most recent vaccination card i only had my digital wallet on my phone but it doesn't have my booster in it um, and so I was kind of concerned about that. And then they never asked and no, only, uh, that's not true. Only two people in the entire event outside of the catering staff, uh, was wearing masks. Mm. So even if I'd worn a mask, the statistical probability of the mask was really minute given the length of time that we were there, the mm. density of the population and the space and all that stuff. So, um, I have rapids here at home that are the freebies uh, through the government um, that I'm going to be doing. So, yeah, Let's see how things go. Yeah. So there was that. That is a thing. Yeah. For sure. That that's, that's kind of the highlights for February. We had a whole bunch of snow. It kind of went away. A little bit came back, and then it went away, and we got some more. And now we're in this weird, like, flexing towards spring. So we, like, have freezing days and non-freezing days. And mm. uh, we're about 30-some days, 20-some days away from the first day of spring. So, yeah. Looking looking forward to the change in weather. Yeah, same. But I think we're done for this part, anyway. Well... At least we had some fun. So let's move on into this. All right, Garrett, Gary, take a deep breath. (laughs) Baby, I don't even remember if we've ever had a list this long of Facebook likes in a single episode. So I we would like to thank the following individuals for liking us on Facebook because y'all are new and I don't know where you came from, but hi <laughs> and thank you. Uh, Brian Simmons, Maximiliano Trinidad, Aaron Robinson Finley, Bruno Diaz, Chris John, Christian Genest or Genest, JP Castro, Christopher Moser, Eric E. Greiner, Jack Jamaladinsky. My apologies, I probably screwed up. Philsky Edwards, Chris Covington, Luke Christopherson, Keith Cheatham, Danny Lee, Jade Adams, Jimmy Minter, Joseph Phillips, Mark J. Thomas Lizott Jr., C.J. Meeks, and Bobby Holmes. Wow. So we got lots of likes in one month. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Like out of the blue. I was like, I went to go update and I was like, uh, uh, oh, like what I do is I always look back to see who we left off with, but then I kept scrolling and I was like, what the hell? Anyways, mm. so yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. Mr. David, uh, tell us about YouTube. 
Sure. So we got a couple of comments. Um, so on COL 635, which was our Let's Talk About Sex, Sex Starvation episode, Owen replied, I feel like there should be a thing at the beginning differentiating this from starvation sex. Not a very well-known kink, but it is a thing. And Gary looks to Damon. <laughs> because I don't know what that is, and I've never heard of it. I'm not sure. So, so Owen, I'm going to, I'm going to maybe reach if you, when you hear this in the, in the chat, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you again to kind of like maybe, because what I'm thinking you're thinking of maybe could potentially be things like, um, like come denial or, or, um, like come denial is the first thing that comes to my mind, but that's not always the case. Um, like edging and what have you, that's kind of in that spectrum. Mm -hmm. The other thing that comes to mind is um, is the denying intimacy or sex um, as kind of a punishment, but I, I, I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. Um, um, this is somewhat new to me. And I'm curious, very, very, very curious now. A clarification. Those, yes, a clarification would be would be appreciated. Thank you, Owen. Um, so to move on, um, so in COL 636, our um, landscape of relationships, um, love languages, Owen replied, my thoughts on different things with this kind of matches Gary's and Damon's. I usually like gifts if it's something I need or ask for. And as for touch and interaction, I generally am more receptive if it's someone I know and have talked to and traded experiences with. And then another comment is, the thing I find interesting is just the different places the five love languages has been applied. And um, finally, I actually didn't know about parallel play, so thanks for that. Yeah. That was actually, I mean, again, thanks to Edward and coming on and kind of discussing that. Um, it is rather um, interesting to kind of know about the five language languages and learning more about those things. So, and getting a more in-depth. Right. Yeah. I, I actually really am thankful to Ed for allowing us to also learn the background about the person who kind of mm -hmm. is known for the love languages and mm -hmm. like that a lot of these theories, these concepts come from a person or persons and sometimes like knowing like how they created them, crafted them, promoted them, whatever, that that can be a, a an aspect to take into measurement. And in this case, we were talking about the the person that had come up with the love languages also like notably had a specific slant um, and had some questionable things. So I think that was really helpful because in the end, I think what we took away from it is like there is some validity conceptually to this. But we also appreciated that a lot of like communities co-opted the concept and made it, mm -hmm. you know, into some other things. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Jeff. Um, before we get into uh, the, the, what we have on here, I was reminded uh, because of the reference to the sex starvation episode that I got some personal feedback. <gasps> oh. Um, of course, just think about it. Um, so, Due to certain reasons, I had linked one of our uh, Bears and Dragons episodes to a friend who then looked at other stuff that was on the channel and basically introduced him to Cubs Out Loud in general. And yeah. he said, oh, my God, I'm loving the latest LTAS episode. Oh, my God, I can't go no more. I got needs. This Gary person's level of social awareness and eloquence I am living for. And this is my DM for my Saturday to get Saturday's games. <laughs> Look at you. And then one other thing I totally forgot. To... We'll play it live. 
We got voicemail. What? So did you know so, if you whisper to Alexa, she whispers back. I learned this in the creepiest way possible. I was just saying something and whispering. And then Alexa just whispered out of nowhere. And I was like, who the fuck is that? Big man. <laughs> now, I will tell you this. So for the co-hosts, I actually transcribed what what is being said because <laughs> our Google voice line transcribed it and it doesn't match this. And I was like, <laughs> what? And I was trying to understand what it meant. And so I had to literally listen to it a couple of times to get it right because I don't, can't remember how it was swapping things in a different way. And uh, yeah, it was, I mean, it was like, it understood what was being said, but it was like, because the person was whispering, I think that's why the, the transcription had a difficult time. But also, now that we've played it, I'm worried that there was sort of a gag in this, that because the name was said a couple times, that people who will listen to this later, if they're playing it on a speaker, that their unit might activate. Possibly. So... But thank you for the voicemail. Uh, we don't get many, but I was highly amused that we got one uh, from somebody who didn't name themselves. So we can't say who they are, but uh, we appreciate it. And it does crack me up a little bit. And no, I'm not surprised that the AI in your speaker system listens with that much like accuracy and will respond in such a way. I like you would say something like, hey. In other words, no, I'm not going to try to ask. <laughs> Activate somebody's. Uh, yeah. Apple voice <laughs> voice system or anything. But uh, also over in uh, over in Twitter, oop, there he is. Come back. We have have uh, Yaron Ebrimvich. PDX Barrister One, just two dudes underscore underscore. Do Bear sixty eight. I'll do Bear. Anyways, um, Mario GRC nineteen seventy five. Shari Nicola four. Shari Nicola. I don't know. Charlie eleven forty one and Big Bear double XL. And Gary. I think we have some patron updates, don't we? We do. do. Dun, da, da. We need an audio thing for this. We, do, we don't have anything for this. <laughs> Patreon! <laughs> we gotta um, thanks for, thank our patrons. Yeah, I got the card up. So, uh, yeah. Um, we have a Patreon. And I'm super excited to say that we have a new patron for our Patreon. And uh, yeah, right. Timothy Shell has joined us at the Uber level. Yay! Um, and so we have three uh, levels, Cubsters, Ubers, and Buddies. <laughs> and um, so uh, we actually want to thank all of our patrons. Uh, so we want to thank Cubster level Charles W., who, by the way, Join Patreon on March 4th, 2018, just a few days from now. It will be four years ago and wow. is our very first patron and has been with us straight through the entire time. So thank you very much, Charles. Yay, thank you. Um, and also, coincidentally, since I'm talking about March 4th, March 4th, 2012 is the TNG beta. Oh, so Damon and Jeff, y'all about to be 10 fucking years old <laughs> as TNG for the beta. I'm still the older brother because I was here before you were. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, who has been here this entire generation? Damon. Correct. 
So uh, for those that don't know a little bit, as we sidebar about the the generations, uh, Jeff helped start the show in the very, 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 very beginning. Um, and then after a hiatus, came back with what was called the TNG, the next generation of hosts, which is where Damon came in. Um, and then about a year after that, maybe, uh, more. or so, uh, maybe yeah. two years, I can't quite recall, is when I came along. So, yeah. And we've had uh, uh, several posts uh, come and gone over the time, and we're very appreciative of their help in creating the legacy of things. But yeah, uh, we're about to come up this week on 10 years of COL with Indeed. Next Generation. Wow. So theoretically, we're about to reach 10 full years of nonstop, like, Cubs Out Loud. I mean, we've had a couple of weeks off here and there randomly, but yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, oh, so in wow. addition to that, we have the Uber level, back to the Patreon stuff. Uh, so we want to thank Dave T, Lee, Michael Q, sometimes also known as Q, and now um, Tim S as our uh, newest Uber level. Plus, we cannot forget our buddies, and we want to thank Lloyd T over in the UK. Uh, Yay. For thank you so much. Buddy. Um, in addition to that, uh, I want to um, apologize to our patrons because we fell behind on rewards and things, um, and we need to mea culpa um, and own up to that. But because we are coming up on the anniversary and um, we want to set rights to things in the month of March 2022, y'all will be getting a bunch of uh, stuff squared up. Um, so we owe some shirts to some folks, some stickers and other things, um, gift cards. So it's our celebration uh, month for Patreon. You've helped, um, quote unquote, keep the show going uh, because mm -hmm. you allowed us to um, pay for the website for uh, four years worth so far. Um, you also have paid for Jeff's computer replacement upgrade uh, and a couple other accessory type items with um, Damon and I. So, yeah. Red light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. <laughs> That's Damon and Gary business hasn't business. looked so good all thanks to you. Yeah. If you uh, go back to the older girl. shows, <laughs> you'll see, you you can see not only us get older, but you can also catch little things here and there. And like for David, um, he didn't have a light for a long time, but he had no idea how dark things kind of looked on his how, set. How, I didn't know how I look at some of the stuff and I'm just like, why didn't no one say anything? <laughs> <laughs> hi everybody and <laughs> can, can you see me yeah you probably i mean you can but it's kind of but not nearly as wonderful as this right right you look gorgeous uh, you look fabulous and i mean the one of the big things which wasn't really a a um patron thing but it was a great thing was i moved from my couch in a living room where the light is over here on the side um, to like here in the in the dining room where at least I had an overhead light to kind of give me something. Yeah. But now I have a, I have a wonderful ring light um, that get, so you can see all this wonderfulness. <laughs> mm. So yeah, no, it's been it's been good. So um, I'm very uh, happy to say that in the coming a uh, couple weeks. So if the patrons watch for uh, some messages that'll come from us, because uh, we're going to need shirt sizes, we've got to figure out um, what we're doing actually for a shirt uh, <laughs> design thing um, for the anniversary. And um, yeah, so lots of lots of cool cool kind of things about that. So and thank you um, to the most recent people that have joined as well. We very much appreciate it. Thank you. Yay. Yay. All right. So I think it's time to move into this. All right. I'm, I'm probably getting a thing. And I totally forgot about a different part. But let's go into this first. We'll go back to that and then we'll go into the link. <laughs> cool. Okay. I haven't done this in a month. <laughs> Uh, we do every month. But I, I got nothing. So, Damon, what did you find in Twitter? Damn. So, sorry. <laughs> oh, and I already hearted it. 
So, so Gary approves, apparently. Um, so this is um, Griffley Bear, G-R-I-T-H-L-Y um, Bear. And I titled it Griffley Bear in the Bathroom because um, uh, he's in, um, in his bathroom, or a bathroom. I don't know if it's his. Who knows? It could not be his. Um, with um, no shirt and... Um, pants are kind of um, undone, and um, his 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 junk is out of his of his of his. I'm thinking jock, if red, I can red what, jock, what yeah. I'm seeing. Yeah, um, and he's quite delectable. Dark bearded, mm-hmm. glasses, shaved head, um, yeah. shaved yeah. head, um, bellied, oh, bearded, belly, chest, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and you know. He's he's not lacking in the penis either, um, so <laughs> <laughs> so um, I love his name is it, Griffley Bear, uh, and I was I'm surprised I think he's kind of doing a combination of grizzly and um, girthy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it all kind of works. Uh, pro- pro- Pronounce like Grizzly Bear, just with the lisp. Grizzly bear. Yeah, Grizzly, Grizzly bear. Grizzly bear. I like Grizzly bear. Yeah, yeah. He's and he's just he's and and he's in he's actually in Nashville, so he's not that far away. Mm. Mm. Excellent. I wonder if he was at. I wonder if he was at World Bear. That would have been wonderful. Anyway. Mm. Uh. He. But yes, just that he's got that. Um. Be spectacled, bearded, bald headed. Bear look and um, button, he's button, definitely, button, button. yep, definitely hitting a lot of buttons. So, the thing about this particular photo, though, that gets me is the look on his face. So, the, mm-hmm. the, sh- the perspective shot is looking sort of up at him at an angle, probably about the not quite a 45, more like a probably 30 degree. And but the thing is, is he's looking down, and because he's holding his junk and he's mm-hmm. already uh, somewhat. At, like at attention, it's very much a, you know what to do. Mm-hmm. Like that's why I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like, like, you thirsty? Mm. Mm, so thirsty. So yeah. Hey, like the cake. Here's the tap for you to drink from. There you go. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Check. Check. Double check. Gary. Uh, mine, I called sometimes watching TV. Um, the actual caption is sometimes watching TV with a bud can lead to other things. Heh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's a nice um, animated, like, you know, drawing of two gentlemen on a love seat, uh, mm-hmm. apparently having some beers and some chips. And. Um, I'm not quite sure what they were watching. It doesn't matter. I know. <laughs> one of them only has either shorts or boxer shorts on. The other one uh, has the shirt up, you know, up over the head, around the back of the uh-huh. neck kind of a deal, and not a lick of anything else on. Um, mm-hmm. And it is the it is the climactic moment because the, the gentleman with the um, underwear or shorts or whatever on has um, been helping through some great manipulation to reach the, mm-hmm. the climax and i just i just love the photo this this art piece i was like wow that's that's fun yeah it's very ne- not even i well netflix and chill kind of you know vibe mm-hmm. like we're we're totally gonna watch this you know we're just gonna sit here and watch this and have some chips and drink some beer and just like chill for a bit and then Oh my, it's getting so hot. Let me take off my shirt. Cause you can see the shirt on the side. Mm-hmm. And um then it just kind of I'm sure it kind of led to like <sighs> making out and touches and gropes. And then the guy, the one with the red shirt kind of like, you know, removed the shirt so he could, you know, get in all of that, you know, furry, you know, chest and belly area. Um, I 
Yeah. I'm like, as I keep looking, sorry, I'm, I'm constantly, I'm looking at everything. I'm kind of like, oh, oh, so, and you notice, I noticed that, um, I'm assuming those are underwear on the guy's, um, at the guy's ankle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and also, um, he's quite a shooter considering he's got some in his beard. Mm-hmm. So, very lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. That was nice, 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 nice. That's good. So, yay, artists. Celebrate the <laughs> arts. Be a supporter. <laughs> And this is from repost t- their picture. repost their sourced shit. Damn it! Don't be stealing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, retweets. That's or sorry, yeah, retweet it. Don't repost. Agreed. And this was this is from tent underscore pitcher. Excellent. Now, Gary, what happened in the show for that? <laughs> Uh, in the month of February, we had three shows. Uh, we did a What's Going On for the month of January. That was episode 634. 635 we talked about, which was LTAS Sex Starvation. Uh, and then 636, which was two weeks ago, uh, before the technical difficulties, we continued the Landscape of Relationships uh, series with Edward Angelini Cook, our resident sex therapist. Uh, we talked about the love languages because it was coming up on Valentine's Day. So there That's was right. that. Mm. Yeah, and now we have this show yeah. the, the, to wrap up the month of February. We're doing it in the month that it's for, you Yay! know. And this is the shortest month of the year. Uh so thank you everybody for surviving through the Olympics and the Super Bowl. March Madness is coming up at my my job, but in the meantime, I've got some links for you. Some things you should you should watch. My link. Is of course the legend about Vox Machina. I don't remember mm. if I linked this last month, you but did. I'm linking it this month <laughs> again <laughs> because now it's complete. So if you you need it, if you wanted to just binge the whole thing, here we go. It goes everything from uh, the beginning with their um, with their pre-stream conflict with a General Krieg uh, to the neck to a later uh, storyline, uh, which is referred to as the Briarwood arc. If you want to know what that means, well, you're going to have to watch the show. Um, it is a different telling. So if you are a fan of the show, there are some inconsistencies. But you know what? That's okay. It's good. If mm-hmm. you don't know anything about it, don't worry about it. It's not like it's not exactly like the like the actual stream game. And plus, it's a lot shorter than trying to watch through the entire Briarwood or our stream. So So um yeah. Yeah. Uh it was great. It was it was fan freaking task. So Yeah. I am I think we talked about when we talked about this last month, one of the things I'm curious about is I want someone who is not a fan of the the Critical Role show to like watch it or you know at least watch an episode and see if they're really interested or not because that's kind of the conflict I'm having personally is am I a fan because I'm a fan of Critical Role do I enjoy this because um, I know tenuously some of the stuff. Are am I actually or is this actually really, really good? I will admit though, I will say this much. The final episode is fan fucking tastic. Like just art wise and story story wise and um um teaser for season long. two. Yeah, everything is just oh so amazing. So um if you get a chance. If you're interested, I will say that much because you know it's not for everyone. They're they're like uh, twenty two minute episodes. Yeah. So uh, even if you're watching it like one episode at a time, I would at least try to get through the first two, which are the yeah. the pre stream arc before they mm-hmm. uh, move into the Briar Ward arc. Yeah. Uh, so just to kind of get a sense, they do have for those who are fans, they do have a bunch of references and and little Easter eggs. 
Does mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. do you have to know what those are to enjoy the show? Hell to the fucking no. no. It's just no. fan service that was thrown in. It's fun stuff. Definitely. It does not, it, it adds to those who know what it means, but it does not subtract from the experience at all. Uh, yeah. If you don't, don't yeah. catch them. So don't Agreed. worry about looking for any sort of Easter egg that might've been on stream. There's plenty of videos about what Easter eggs there were. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you can, yeah. Um, so we watch Jim and I, we pretty much watched it in the clumps that they, um, distributed them. So you get the first three episodes, one to three, four to six, seven to nine, and then 10 to 12. So they kind of released it in three episode chunks. Um, I could see going back and maybe splitting that up a little bit, like, Mm -hmm. but again i yeah. think it was worth it mm-hmm. i think it was I, I i think i thought it was i thought it was really good a really good new telling mm-hmm. uh, of it i'm not going to say it's a retelling because there is a lot of differences um that i know from the stream and everything but those differences don't matter this is a completely different thing it's like mm-hmm watching a comic book adaptation of a, a movie com- of a comic book they're really two different things they're just one's based on the other but you shouldn't necessarily have ne- need to have read it to really really enjoy it at all in this case same thing they're, they're mm-hmm. two different completely different experiences but um just based off of stuff it was almost like yeah. the stream was a brainstorming session for what the <laughs> the show ended up being yeah um, so yeah i i strongly encourage people to to check it out don't worry don't think about it as being oh this is D. no it's not D. it was a cartoon yeah. it was made by the people who did avatar the last airbender and uh oh what else else did they do um invincible invincible it's it's great yeah there gary um so uh this past month i do have a couple of things from different platforms disney plus i highly recommend if you have disney plus you go check out summer of soul this is from quest love uh it is an amazing documentary piece that was put together on a festival that took place in a park in uh, New York City, I believe, in the summer of 1969, at the same time, not at the exact same time, but right around the time of Woodstock. But no one seemed to know about this Soul Fest, the Summer of Soul uh, park like thing that took place. And all this vintage footage was found in a basement 50 years after um, it had taken place. And Questlove was like, I, uh, my understanding, I don't know the whole lore, but my understanding is that it was discovered. And then someone came to him and was like, I think you're the right person to tell this story. And so what I loved the most about it is they show a ton of vintage footage from the festival. They had it um, highly, produced for for recording which is amazing given the technology at the time um and they had the still alive performers um some of them watch the vintage footage of themselves from f- over 50 years ago so wow. the gladys knight of gladys knight and the pips is there watching herself um i think marilyn mccu like these these amazing wow. black artists. Um, I'll be honest, I got emotional watching it. It was so nice to see a piece of of history contextually. They talk about what was going on at the time, um, about how things have been happening with the black community, and you know uh, that you know JFK, Robert Kennedy, you know these mm. what all the trauma that America had been dealing with at the time. Um, You know, and that the persons of color in the community, there are so many crowd shots. It's amazing to see the the diversity of the crowd 
Um, because this is the changing of a, a real time in our country where we were coming out of the 50s and into the 60s, which we have this whole like prim and proper kind of aspect of society that everybody dressed like with most for the most part kind of conformed. And then we ended up with like the hippies in the 60s. So we've got like all sorts of representation. Um, we've got, you know, women, you know, and, and it's interesting because it's part of that um, laugh in genre kind of mm -hmm, like that mm -hmm. that that color scape and and so anyways i can't really uh i'd heard about it i i'd heard quest love do a, a podcast interview um i think it was through npr and he talked briefly about it and i remember hearing about it and then um it was it's part of black history month uh for this month so um i'm very happy that uh, disney plus has it up there as one of the selections um so yeah i highly recommend people check it out over on Netflix, uh, if you have been watching Disenchantment, the animated series part four or season four has come out. Um, this is with Matt mm. Groening. Um, I'm going to warn you now, like this is not for the little kids. This is an adult <laughs> version of medieval slash fairy tale fantasy sort of D&D like era and by that i mean like it's 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 wizards and elves and gnomes and castle and and all of that mm -hmm. and magic that and, fantasy and genre yeah 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 um but it's it's super twisted uh and yeah so if you haven't been seeing it the newest season four is out and i think season five will be the end of it um and of course they left it at a cliffhanger at the end of season four um mm -hmm. so it's and it's kind of crazy because every time they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe they did that. And they just kind of keep pushing it <laughs> on some things, at least like, I mean, they're not going too extreme, but it's 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 I think it's funny. And so I binged it recently. I was very happy to see that it came out uh, with season four, or what they call part four. Speaking mm. of season four, uh, I may have already talked about it before, but baby, if you have Paramount Plus, I really recommend that you watch Discovery from the Star Trek series uh, from the universe, because uh, season four, um, it's in the future and the far, 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 far future. And it is pretty interesting what they're doing. It is the most technologically advanced season. Um, it is the most uh, Im like kind of interesting, like immersive season. They've really are dealing with some uh, aspects of what the Federation is, what it means. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but this particular season is pretty intense because um, they talk uh, kind of about, you know, the concept of uh, the prime directive and like first mm. contact. And in this particular season, um, there could be some really disastrous effects of messing up a first contact uh, where things are at right now. And um, I realize like it's not necessarily everybody's cup of tea, but Michael Burnham as the lead uh, black actress who is the captain. Um, uh, Sadiqa Green Martin. I don't know what to say about her. She is a queen. She is astoundingly amazing. She reminds me of... Um, uh tracy ellis ross is that right um mm -hmm, mm -hmm, diana ross's mm -hmm. daughter she's so grounded and so like i just love watching her in interviews and um she's in it and i forget the actor's name who plays uh, cleveland booker um he's amazing like i just uh, i can't get enough of this particular series um i'm so proud of what they're doing um honestly star trek overall is having this like this whole renaissance uh, time right now between all the shows and starting this week um if you are listening uh, to us or watching us in the, the week that we air picard is coming back the star trek ah. series um and uh yeah so it's going to be very interesting because discovery and picard are going to end up overlapping like they're both going to be airing at the same time Mm. Uh, which is which is sort of interesting because uh, Star Wars and Marvel, like uh, and and all that stuff over in Disney, they've been intentionally they like pause one and then kick off the other, or one ends and then the other begins. So like you know, The Mandalorian just ended, and now Kenobi is going to start soon. Like so, they they kind of space things out. But this one I thought was very interesting because Star Trek Prodigy. The animated series, which I've really enjoyed, um, took a, a hiatus while Discovery started. 
And mm. then Discovery took a hiatus mid-season and Prodigy finished part of, or I think did the second part of its first season or finished its first season. I'm not sure which, because it's because it's going to go on. Um, and then now Picard's starting up, but I'm I'm pretty certain they're not stopping Discovery. So I'm not quite sure what the story is there. But anyways, um, and if you hadn't heard, uh, part of the reason why P- people are pretty hyped about Picard uh, this new season is because uh, Q is back. John Delancey is in it. And, and, and of course, uh, which it's already been revealed and talked about, which is what I'm so stoked for, uh, Guinan is in at least a episode. The Whoopi Goldberg is uh, returning for her role in this season. I'm so excited because um, <laughs> I was not a big TNG person. I didn't necessarily watch that particular thing. Voyager was was my uh, kind of uh, show that was my yeah. uh, my whole thing. But I, I honor it. I, I really appreciate it and that kind of stuff. And, and I just want to give a little shout out, not that it matters, uh, Will Wheaton, who was in TNG <laughs> as... Wesley Crusher, he got the gig to be the host of what's called the Ready Room, which is kind of their behind the scenes after show. And so he gets to do these great interviews and talk to people. And I'm really happy for him. Um, it, for those that didn't know, he had a, a very scary medical situation that occurred in the past six months. Um, he basically had a seizure. His wife, um, uh, Anne, posted about it, I think, on their Instagram. It's heartbreaking. Um, to read from her perspective the entire experience of what happened. He went to the hospital. Um, they weren't sure what was happening, what if he was going to make it. Um, and to just watch him be this uber geek who is <laughs> like, like being the host of a show about a franchise he's been involved in and he so deeply loves. Um, it's just, it, it, I just... I'm really, really super happy for that. So uh, the 80s kid of me is just really super pleased right now that there's so much stuff that's coming out that is calling back to our childhoods of the, the, the you know, the major properties, the IPs that uh, had stuff going on. So, yeah, go right. see this stuff if you can, if you can um, enjoy it. I highly recommend it. Watch it. <laughs> Yay! Whole bunch of stuff, and don't forget you could like subscribe to Disney and stop, and then subscribe to Netflix and stop, and then subscribe to the Paramount Plus and stop. That's the nice thing about these subscription sh- services. There's no commitment. Yeah. You don't have to do it like either. Just yeah. sit on things Vomit and forget. Other mm. people. Um. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, the, which is kind of what they hope for. Yeah. I mean, you could also subscribe to us. Because, you know, yeah. there's, yeah, there's plenty of ways to contact us. Dude, uh, there's going to our website, cupsoutloud.com. She has an email, cupsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us voicemail, just like whoever that person was. At 361 we'll talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. It comes out loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Subscribe to us there, right there on YouTube. You can uh, also join our entourage chat and and talk to us directly and and, and chat about other things in the chat. I mean, it doesn't have to be about the show. So at tinyurlcom slash telegram dash col, you can also subscribe to our Google Calendar. Hey, another way to subscribe to us at tinyurlcom slash calendar dash col. You get various accoutrements, such as uh, a Cubs Out Loud shirt, a hat, some uh, 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 Consent is My Foreplay shirts, mugs. Hey, and you know, those Consent is My Foreplay shirts, as well as many other designs, were designed by Smashy. So, well, you can get these shirts at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. You can also get other Smashy Design shirts at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. And of course, if you want to subscribe to us and totally forget about your subscription, a great place to do that would be Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. <laughs> um, or if you'd like to just send us some cash, you can do that at people.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can also subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and uh, Spotify. 
You can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Set Box, Puppy Box Cub, Box Up the Other. Or you could subscribe and follow me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash windgem. That's W-Y-N-D-G-E-M. Damon. Subscribe. Twitch Prime. Um, subscribe. <laughs> yeah, subscriptions. Yeah. Sorry. Anywho. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me um, at theatercub79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Gary? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gary 73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Hello, everybody. Ciao for now.